Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm Ivan Cisco with the Do Life Family, and I'm just getting back from Las Vegas. And I got to tell you, I had one of the most mind-expanding experiences of my career. I was there for a three- or four-day four conference, and I got to tell you, it doesn't matter what your background is or what profession you're involved with. And I'll warn you ahead of time, the video is lengthy, but the information you're going to check out today is that information that you need or possibly will need to expand your belief system to a completely different level. So if you're looking to have the best year of your life, if you're looking to uh, get to a completely new level in your career, um, this is something you're not going to want to miss. And I encourage you not to take it lightly. So get yourself a notepad, embrace this information, and I'm really happy to share it with you today. So enjoy. We'll talk to you next time. Every once in a while, an expert emerges and completely changes the game. Someone who is a mentor to those who are willing to learn. A leader who does just that. Leads. Someone who is the very definition of courage. The example of integrity and an undeniable product of a strong work ethic. A man who leads by example and takes total responsibility. He came from humble beginnings, signing his first application at the age of 18, building an organization one person at a time. And now, he's being called one of the most influential men in our industry, even the Michael J. Jordan of Network Marketing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the one, the only, Mr. Holton Bugs. me up and he says, listen, Holton, he says, I've got the most dynamic distributors that desire to have their dreams come true in network marketing. This is the finest gathering of distributors out of anywhere in the world. That's what he told me. And I said, can I please come, even if you sneak me in, let me be the last speaker so that all the good ones have gone already, just in case those people have gone home already. They've got the good speakers. He says, I'll let you come and say a couple words to them. But I need you guys to convince me that my friend Eric was right. Because you just heard Donna says, how you do anything is how you do what? Everything. Everything. If you won't show up for you, let me ask you a question. Your son, your daughter... Your, 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 your distributor or, or somebody else that you personally sponsor. I want you to imagine right now that they're getting recognized at the highest level in your organization, in your company. How would your, how would your response be? <laughs> hold on for a second. Hold on, hold on. No, no, hold on, hold on. This is a teaching moment. I'm just telling you. Hold on for a second. The reason I'm saying that is this. Okay? Because some of you, I say, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Now, we're going to do this one more again. Okay? Anybody understand what I mean by one more again? Yeah. Those of you who don't understand, I'll be, you know, politically correct. We're going to do this once again, boys and girls. All right? Are you ready? Yes! Yeah. Awesome. That's what I'm talking about. Give yourselves a round of applause. Man, I, I, am, I am excited. Uh, I, I, um, I just have to give a big round of applause, guys. We have to give great appreciation for this venue, for all the hard work, the vision of putting it together, um, because it's not too many, there's not too many venues with, with the level of integrity that I'm witnessing here put together uh, on a non-company-specific basis okay, than what Eric 
and, and Marina have put together. So let's give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Huge round of applause. I am actually, I'm actually honored to be here just to share a, a few words of wisdom uh, with many of you. This is, um, you know, my, this is actually my first time, actually second time. Well, at, for distributors, my first time ever going to, to speak somewhere, whereas it wasn't a group of distributors that, that uh, I was a part of a company. And, and it's awesome just to see so many different people from different backgrounds. And, and I was telling a guy in the audience there in the back as I was walking out, I was here a little earlier, and I said, it's awesome to be somewhere where nobody knows you. You know, I could just walk and talk or whatever it was. I sat next to a lady. She had no idea who I was. Sat next to this guy, and he was just, just, just you know, it was just awesome. And so I'm, I'm grateful to be here, and hopefully something that I say today uh, will, will enlighten you in some form or fashion. I'm not here to really teach you how to build a business. I think you've got probably some of the greatest teachers from the companies that Eric told me that's represented here. You have the best of the best when it comes to teaching the industry of network marketing. You've got the best of the best. And, and I'm not one who believes in plugging in to the guest speaker. You plug into your plugged in upline. So what we're here to do this, this weekend and all the speakers who've been here this weekend, I'm sure have shared what they've actually done and something that, that, that's either inspired them or something that they've done that has actually helped them to get to where they are. And what my goal is to do the exact same thing and just to share some things with you. For those of you who, who know me, I never know what I'm going to say when I get on stage. I don't speak from PowerPoints. I don't have notes uh, ever. Uh, I planned that I was going to write my speech for this um, for this event about two weeks ago, and, and, and I did. Where's my, little, where's my notes? Uh-oh, I left my notes. Anyway, it was about four words that I put on a sheet of paper. <laughs> it happens like that all the time, and, uh, and, and it's, it's the truth. I, I, I don't. I don't plan what, I, what I'm going to say. I normally just get a good feel from the audience and just share what's on my heart and share what's going on. That's, that's how I've always been in this industry, and that's, how, that's what I've done. And, um, but but I, I'm excited for what's going on. I think the industry now is, is, is really doing some incredible things. I think 2014 for all of you can be your year if you choose for it to be. It's not going to be just because you attended this weekend. It's going to be because you selected yourself. It's going to be because you made a decision for 2014 to be your particular year. Now, I got stopped in the, on, on the way to the restroom there. Somebody was asking me about my income and stuff like that. I heard this rumor. I, I saw something on the Internet. And, and he says, well, you know, they can't put it on the Internet if it's not true. How many of y'all saw that commercial? <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, rumors get spread all the time. Sometimes they're good rumors. Sometimes they're, they're bad rumors. How many, of you, how many of you have been the recipient of some rumors? How many of you have actually been the deliverer of rumors? Okay. So everybody who's not raising your hand, you're telling me that you're a liar too, right? We all share, we all spread rumors in this industry. I'll tell you one rumor that kind of, it was, it, was it was a rumor. It kind of worked in my favor, but it was a rumor. I, I'll never forget, this was back in maybe 2003. 2003, I was working in this industry and I was... Um, uh, obviously very excited again. I had been in the industry at that time, 2003, 13 years. I had just started, you know, I've been making money in this industry now three years. Uh, three years I have been making money in this industry. And I'll share with you a little bit of my story. You know, the, the, it, it took me a little while. You know, most people look and say, right, man, you're overnight success. I am. It took me actually somewhere about uh, 18 years to be an overnight success, okay? And... Um, but, but 2003, I never forget what happened is I happened to be, 2005, I'm sorry, 2005, I happened to be uh, one of those lucky ones who was, who was chosen to be written up in the magazine because of some results that I had had, because of my status with a particular company. And the magazine was called Millionaire Magazine, okay? How many of you would read a magazine called Millionaire Magazine? Specifically, if you're in network marketing, you would. So here it was. They, uh, they have one article that they do per year, one per year that they call billionaire. Okay? So they've got all these articles, and I was just selected for the billionaire edition. Not because I was better than everybody else in my company or not. I wasn't. It was just that when my article came up, it was the time for them to do the billionaire edition. So here it was. I'm selected for billionaire. My wife and I have this nice picture, and it says millionaire maker. I didn't choose the title or any of, the, any of that. Now, what happened was this here. 
this was the time, I think, around the time Donald Trump was just about to start the show Apprentice, all right? And so um, there was kind of this debate as to who was going to go on the cover of the magazine, okay? Donald Trump or me, okay? And because I know he was starting his show and I didn't want him to be embarrassed by being somewhere in the middle, I said, Donald, go ahead and take the cover. No problem whatsoever. And he did. He took the cover. So here he is. He's on the cover of this magazine, Billionaire Magazine. They've got Donald Trump on the cover. And somewhere back in there, they've got Holton and Earlene Bugs in there. And here's how rumors get started. i never forget, I, I, I had a lady in my organization. She was a very good friend of mine. And she asked me about uh, would I get on a conference call and talk to a group of hers that was in the Bahamas. I said, sure, I'll do it. So I get on the phone. I said, Kim, yeah, no problem. I'll get on the phone. And i never forget, she had uh, maybe about 15 distributors on the phone call. Now, I'm on the phone call talking to them, excited. They're excited and everything. And then they asked me one question. They said, well, Mr. Bugs, would you be willing to come to the Bahamas to do a presentation? I said, let me think about it. Yes, I'll come. It's the Bahamas. All right? So, as I think about it, and then I ask them, how many people will you guys put together in a room if I choose to come? They say, well, we, we're going to put together 200 people. Now, how many of you have ever been lied to? You're going to do a meeting. They tell you that they know the president. They know the secretary of state. They know everybody, right? And when you get there, it's different. So, I'm expecting 50. They said 200. My expectations are 50. I'm managing my expectations. So, but what had happened was this. This magazine came out. So Kim, this is what she did. i never forget, she took a copy of this magazine cover, color copy of the front of the magazine. And then she took my one-page article and she made another copy of it. She put them together, went to wherever, Kinko's, FedEx, whatever it's called now, and she made one little flyer, all right? So you didn't know who was the cover. You flip it over, I'm on the cover, all right? It's only two pages anyway. So this is what she did. She took that and she sent that along with a DVD of some presentation I had never seen. By the way, don't do that. Check with your upline before you ever send something that, you, that they've never seen. But she sent the DVD that I had never seen along with this one little flyer over to the Bahamas. Here it is. I get to the Bahamas. This is how rumors get started and how they'll mess your entire organization up. All right? So I go over to the Bahamas. I'm all excited. Why? Because I'm ready to get through this presentation to go to the, you know, to the sandy beaches and do all this kind of stuff and chill with my pineapple drink and all of this stuff. And so I'm at the top of the hotel and it's about time for me to come on down. I come on down. And I come down. I'm all dressed up and I've got my, you know, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to take on these 20, 25 people that's showing up. All right? Because I'd already kind of, you know, 50 I was expecting. I'm like, it's the Bahamas. I don't know. I haven't talked to these people. They may, may have 25, 20, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to give my best presentation ever, and then I'm going to the beach. So here it is. I come downstairs or coming down the escalator. And as I get to the bottom or the top of the escalator, I'm looking down, and it's this huge crowd of people in this one uh, particular bar where they had multiple rooms, and I knew my room was on the other side. So I go down, and I see all of these people, a sea of people at the base of the, of the escalator. Later. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? What's going on? Why are all these? I'm, and I'm thinking, I need to go and see whoever's speaking here if they can get a crowd like this. <laughs> I need to see them, right? And so I go down and I walk down and I'm, I'm going through the crowd and people are pushing and shoving and pushing and shoving. And I heard they close the doors and says, hold on, we can't let any more people in. And I'm like, Man, I want to get in and see who's in, right? And so what happened is I see this late and there's all this commotion, people going back and forth, they're shouting and screaming and all this stuff. And, and see, Bahamas is one of those countries that when I go, I blend in. So nobody really knew who I was, if you know what I'm talking about. All right. All right. So, so what happens, I get down and I'm like, what's going on here? I'm going to my room. I'm trying to get to my room. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And this lady, she looked at me. She said, you haven't heard. I'm like, no, I haven't heard. I'm thinking... I don't know what's going on. I'm wondering what, what's happening, you know. She said, you haven't heard, sir? I'm like, no, I haven't heard. What, what do you mean? What's going on? She reached into her purse. And I got a little shaky when she reached into her purse, right? She reached into her purse and she grabs a flyer and she says, look, the first black billionaire from Houston, Texas has come to the Bahamas to do a meeting. And I'm like, hold on for a second. See, the rumor got out that I was a billionaire in the Bahamas. 1,700 people showed up because of a rumor. See, it has nothing to do with whether it's a rumor or not. They were fired up. 
they were excited. Okay? That's why I had you do it over again. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. And i never forget, ladies and gentlemen, I went into that room and 1,700 people, they turned away 800 plus people. Very first meeting that I had ever done in the Bahamas. Okay? And this was back in, like I said, 2005. But rumors start all the time. Rumors spread all the time. And i never forget, you know, uh, leaving there and I was all excited and I was hoping that it would happen again everywhere else that I went. But but I couldn't, I couldn't start the rumor as good as they started the rumor. But anyway, <laughs> you know, I, I want to talk to you about um, if there's anything that I would call my, what I'm going to talk to you about today is, I guess I would call it the, uh, the domino effect. I'm going to talk to you about the domino effect. Because people always ask me, you know, things about how do I get to my, you know, how did I make what I make or how did I become successful in this industry of networking? And I used to get these questions all the time. And I'll share with you one little caveat here. Uh, before I joined my current company, I've been with my current company five years. I've been doing this industry for 23 years, started when I was three. And, um, <laughs> but before I joined, I used, I used to have people ask me all the time because I had some success. I'd actually become a, uh, a million dollar earner before in, uh, in network marketing. And people would ask me, you know, what would you do if you had a chance to do it all over again? And my answer was, this is what my, my answer was. It wasn't can, it was my answer. It was for me. It wasn't for anybody else. I never tried to imp impress anybody else. My answer was, I would believe much bigger, much sooner. Ladies and gentlemen, what I have found is this, 23 years of doing this industry, and I don't know it all. I can't tell you I'm the sharpest in this industry. I am not one of the sharpest. I don't know as much of the stuff as some of the people who've spoken here, but I do know a few things. And I'm going to talk about just those few things that I do know, a few things that I have mastered. I am not the best at it, but I'm telling you I am, an, I am excellent when it comes to a couple of few things that I'm going to talk to you about. But I said I would believe much bigger, much sooner. Why? Many of you right now, some of you here, and, and before I even go, I want to know, can I, talk, can I tell you the truth? Okay, Eric, do I have permission to tell them the truth? Okay, now, because some of you have squandered a fortune already. Because some of you are waiting until you get to $10,000 a month before you believe. You've already missed millions. I said I would believe much bigger, much sooner. And I would say it over and over and over again. People would always, and they would want to go, they, they would ask me another question. Well, could you tell me the real answer? I will believe much bigger, much sooner. Okay. And, and that's what, because I knew that's what I was missing. I knew that's what I was missing because, see, before in network marketing, when I joined, I was 18 years of age when I actually got started in, in this industry. My first seven years, I never made more than $500 in any one month. There was three separate months that I made $500, but I spent $1,500 on some products. I wasn't so good at math. $1,500, $500 check, Every, uh, th three months, now back then, I had to pay my group out of that 500. I had a group in seven years that never totaled 50 people. I'm not talking all 50 in at one time. I'm talking, I averaged about seven new people joining my company, my organization, per year. For the first seven years. And I never knew that I was failing. I never felt like, you know, like I was losing. I, I maintain excitement. I never have missed an event that I qualified to attend in 23 years outside of tonight. Tonight, I'm actually missing my company's Christmas party. Okay, 23 years. I have never missed an event. Because I stayed, I stayed engaged, I stayed engaged, but what happened was I, I realized why I wasn't making any money. It wasn't the company, it wasn't that I needed to do another company, it wasn't any of that that I needed a new upline. I realized much later that issue was me. I realized that issue was 
It, it, it was a product of things that I had seen, product of things that I had, had heard, product of things that I had actually witnessed. See, I realized that I had been messed up. I, I realized that I, I, had been, I had been sold a bill of goods and somebody had actually messed with this head of mine and it caused me to fail. Okay? And, and, and I'll never forget, as a matter of fact, I, I had a mentor, and, and I recommend you get a mentor. I had a mentor when I was, when I was pretty young, and this is the person, this is why I say you've got to be careful who you listen to. You've got to be very careful who you listen to. But my mentor messed me up. I had to change. I had no idea. Because they told me a bunch of lies. And I'm listening, and I'm following, and I'm, and, I, and I'm thinking that they really, really know what they're talking about, and I'm going down one path, and I'm getting results that I don't want, but I was plugged into this mentor. As a matter of fact, the, five years ago when I first joined my company, I called up every single person that was in my telephone. This is the first time. I, remember, it's 18 years now. Five years ago was 18 years that I had been in the industry. This was the very first time I had called every single name that I could actually get a hold of. If your name was in my phone book, I called it. And this is the other thing that I did. If your name was in my phone book and I didn't call it, I deleted your number. This is why. I'm going to give you another one, guys. Because I didn't want to carry around negative relationships of people that I didn't want, so I deleted their number. If your number didn't exist, it was in my phone, and I didn't want you in my business, delete, 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 delete. Because remember, this is what happened. I now have a chance. Remember, the advice that I would give to everybody else, I would think much bigger, much faster. I said this for years and years and years and years and years. And here I am five years ago in a transition state. Guess what? I now need to follow my own advice. I must think much bigger right now. Yeah. I've got to think much bigger before I even sign the application. And I did. I made sure I got two years of mental experience before I put my name on the application. And I did that process in 11 days. 11 days of me pre-launching, pre-thinking, and doing all of the stuff. Two years of experience, two years of planning. I had planned out my future before I even signed the application. Because I said, I'm gonna think much bigger, much faster. I'm gonna do some things that I'd never done before. And I called every single person, and the first person that I called was my mentor. I didn't even know that it was that person. I'm just making phone calls, I'm excited, I'm fired up. I'm making phone calls. I'm calling every single person that I know. And i never forget, this is how that phone call went. And my dream, your dream sometimes can, can almost get snatched away from you if you're not careful. Pick up the phone, didn't know it was my mentor on the other end. And hit, this is what I'm saying here. I'm saying, and I'm, hello, blah, 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 this is Holton. And I'm asking them a little qualifying question. And the first thing that they came back with, is this Holton? with that type of tone. Is this Holton? Yeah, yeah, this Holton. Are you calling me about another one of those things? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to talk. I, I've got a new, listen, I don't want to hear about your new nothing. You've called me several times about these things. I've lost money in the first one. I lost money in the second one. The third one was illegal. The, this one's probably illegal. You're probably going to go to jail. You're going to lose all your friends and family and all of that kind of stuff. Matter of fact, don't call me no more about your MLM because I really don't even like you. And I'm like, Mom, I just want you to just try. I just want you to be a customer. My mom and I, we have a unique relationship, right? <clears throat> So, but anyway, she messed me up. That was my mentor. That's the person who told me a bunch of lies. That's the person who got my head all, all screwed up because of what we call the politically correct way of doing certain things. That was the person who told me a structured way of living so that I can get an expected result that she had never had. My mom loves me. She loves me dearly. We have an incredible relationship. So I don't want you to think, man, he hates his mom. No, I love her. I just speak the truth. 
I tell it like it is. But my mom, she prepared me for failure. My mom never made more than $1,300 a month in her entire life. How she's going to teach me how to be a millionaire? But I was listening to her. As a matter of fact, she messed me up pretty big time. How many of you in here are messed up right now? Raise your hands if you're messed up. <laughs> if you didn't raise your hands, then let me, lets me further know how messed up you are because you don't even know you're messed up. <laughs> you think you're the deal, right? No, I'm not messed up. No, no, no. My mom's got a college degree, all right? But this is what happened. Let me, let me give you an example here real quick, all right? I'm going to share something with you, okay? And I'm going to share with you why I, I ended up seven years, never more than $500 a month. And then I'll share with you how over the last five years I've had the results that you heard Curtis just talk about. Now, I am not as good as my results are. I am not that guy. Okay. Some of you may think I am. You may think, oh, this guy, he, he was born with MLM. No, 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 no. I can't tell you every little secret. I can't tell you every little training topic. I can't tell you every company. I'm, I, I'm really, if you ask people who talk, I'm, I'm not a network marketer. I'm not embarrassed. I love our industry. That's why I'm here. I'm a businessman. I happen to use network marketing as a platform to create wealth. I'm a businessman first. Network marketers, you know what they do? They look for other network marketers. They look for other people who've got network markets to build their group because they don't go out and do it themselves. I'm a businessman. I understand that this industry has the most incredible aspect of leverage to create wealth that I've ever seen before. So I am a business thing. I'm a businessman. Okay? But my mom, she set me up for failure. She used to tell me some things, that, you know, just to share with you. Some of you in here probably know my mom. Raise your hands if you know my mom. So only a couple, a few people here, three or four people know my mom. Some of you have been having some secret conversations with my mom because you're messed up too. She used to tell me the secrets to success. Now, I don't understand why she would just whisper the secrets to success. You know, how many of you had your mom before they should just whisper things in your ear? You know, why would she whisper them? I'm like, mom, who's going to find out? It's not like it's a test or anything, right? But she would tell me some things. As a matter of fact, I'm going to reveal some of the things my mom used to tell me when I was a little boy that... She probably told you, and you've been, you've been messing around talking to my mom. I can prove it to you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say some things, and I promise you, you will finish, finish my sentences. Even if you try to hold back with all the restraint that you want to, you're going to finish them because it's so wrapped up in your subconscious mind. My mom got you. <laughs> First lie she ever told me, son, listen, if you ever want to be successful, go to school, get a good Job. education so you can get a good Job. How many of y'all know that's the biggest lie that's ever been told in America? I'm not here downing jobs. I'm just up on opportunity. Okay? So those of you who have a job, you should be very thankful that you at least have one, and specifically with, with, with the way the economy has been. But you never get rich on your job. You get rich when you build your business. She also told me, she says, hold to listen. She says, watch out for those get rich quick. On your way to success, make sure you play it. Money can't buy. Hmm. <laughs> Y'all just don't know where to shop. Good things come to those who. Hmm. Money don't grow on. All rich people are going to. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, did you hear him? I didn't say that, okay? I don't want y'all thinking, you know, Eric, hey, Holton came up here telling everybody they're going to hell, all right? <laughs> See, y'all been hanging out with my mom. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. See, y'all can repeat those things just like that, okay? Just, it's in your subconscious mind. She messed me up with all of that thinking. So what happens is this. This is why it's been so difficult for some of us in here who have all the skill sets in the world to get to that pinnacle level of success, whatever it is that you call it. It's not necessarily 100 grand a month. It's not necessarily 10,000. Whatever, whatever you chose to use this industry for, whatever that peak level is for you, that is your pinnacle. Don't measure it by your neighbors. Don't measure it by your uplines. Don't measure it by mine. That's the biggest issue. Most people in this industry, we compete with people we shouldn't compete with. We compare ourselves to other people and when you do that, what you're going to do is you're only going to compete against their advantages and you're going to look at your disadvantages. It will never be equal. But, you, but you've got to start to understand what, 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 what you want out of this industry. 
My mom, when she gave me all of that stuff, she messed me up. And this is what happened to how you got messed up. When somebody looks you in the face, those of you who are first-time networkers or second-time or third-timers, and when we talk to you about being able to earn a six-figure income in a certain period of time, what happens is your mom, my mom's voice goes into your mind. Oh, that must be one of those schemes. He's talking about getting rich quick because it's right there in your mind. I had a lady in California. I was doing a presentation, and she stood up. She says, sir, are you talking about one of them get-rich-quick schemes? I said, ma'am, I, I sure hope it is. You ever try getting rich slow? <laughs> but she messed me up, okay? Mom messed me up. The domino effect started with mom. Started with mom. Mom messed me up. She started telling me all of these things. She got my head all messed up. She's got my head prepared to, be a, to, to work for somebody else. She's telling me how great of an employee I can be and, and how I need to study so I can be this wonderful employee because she had never, ever experienced the field of entrepreneurial, uh, 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 of, of, you know, experience being an entrepreneur. She had never experienced that before. And so here it is. She's giving me the best that she's got, but she messed me up. And so here I was. I'm in a company that now depends on how I think. And I'm using $1,300 a month thinking because that's what my mom made. Okay? That's what she made. She used to always tell me, son, make sure you go get your education. That's something they can never take from you. I'm like, mom, who want to take it? And why? why? You know, when I look back on the stuff that she used to say, I'm like, you don't want to get a house that big because there might be somebody else in there living with you and you don't even know it. you talking about? Back then it was, you're right, mom, you're right. Why? She had influence. So ladies and gentlemen, the domino effect started with the people that have an influence in your life. It may be your mom, it may be your dad, it may be your sister, your brother, maybe your pastor, it may be your coworker, it may be your best friend, it may be your husband, it may be your wife. I don't know who it is, but it starts with someone. You've got to be able to take inventory and recognize and identify who's who, 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 who am I patterning my thinking after? I was patterning my thinking after my mom. I was patterning my thinking after a few of my, my, my professors. When I got to school, I was the first person in my family to go to college. And i never forget, I used to take some engineering classes. And when I was in engineering classes, my, my professors, you know, because I started network marketing, and I had already sold that, I'd already professed, I am not going to be an engineer. I was just getting through that stuff because I knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. Once I went to that meeting, and I saw all of those people in there dressed up, and they talking about I'm a retired pharmacist and retired this and retired that, and I'm like, nobody's ever told me about this. I'm going to do this. And so my professor, he used to always joke and laugh about me being an entrepreneur all the time. So my professor had a little influence on me because he was having me question whether or not I should go down this path or whether I should be the world's greatest engineer. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the thing here. I want you to understand something. See, the things that you're thinking, it comes from those people that you've been associating with. I had to learn the art of disassociation or limited association. This is what I had to learn. I had to start with my family as well. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate that. I had to start with some of my family members. I didn't understand this my first seven years. I thought that I could stay who I was and that the universe was going to allow income and increases to come to me even though I was not willing to change. I've now learned the art or learned the principles that govern the building of wealth, and it's very simple. And I don't want to profess that just getting involved, you're going to become an overnight millionaire. No, 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 that doesn't happen like that. Doesn't happen that way. Yeah, you can start making money pretty fast in this industry. The technology today, and, and, and you should expect to make money fast. Faster, okay, faster. Don't think fast money is bad money. And don't think slow money is always good money, okay? I read a book called Speed Wealth by T. Harv Eker. He says, whatever it is that you're doing, if it takes you longer than two to five years to earn a million dollars a year, you're doing it the wrong way. It changed my entire life because I started reading from other people now because here I was, here's my thinking. 
it should take me seven, eight, nine, 10, 15 years so that I can make full-time income. Why? Seven years, never made more than $500 a month because my thought process, my upline, the people that were my, my sponsors and my sponsor sponsors, all of them were in that, were, were, were what I call those average thinkers. I was in an environment where losing was accepted as winning. I'm not putting them down, I'm just speaking the truth today. To them, it was just, now, here it was. I'm in the company. I'm seeing other people in this company get involved. After I had been in two, three, four years, and they're retiring, I can't even pay my gas bill with my commissions. Something's wrong with that picture. It wasn't them. It wasn't the company. It was me. Thinking. How did I think? So, ladies and gentlemen, your thought process, you're going to have to change your thought process. You're going to have to alter the way that you think. My goal today in the next few minutes here is just to give you what I call a conscious interrupt. How many of you have ever heard, you know, a, a object, an object in motion will continue in that same motion unless interrupted by an outside force or object, right? I learned a few things in college, right? Same thing, an object in motion, well, a thought in motion because a thought is nothing but energy. If you've read... The law of success, you start reading and hearing, understanding what a thought really is. Napoleon Hill breaks it down, it talks about its ether, and it transfers, it just continues. Well, a thought in motion will continue in that same motion unless interrupted by an outside force or object. One of the first people that I got introduced to that really changed my way of thinking that I realized, wow, this is a much bigger industry. Wow, there's a lot of stuff that I thought that I knew that I really don't even know is one of my, my, one of my best friends in the world and my best, best friend in network marketing, and that's Lisa Grossman. Th this, I'm telling you, this lady here, she changed. I never, she probably doesn't remember. I, I remember we got on the telephone one that she had no idea who I was at the time, and I've got a group of my people on the phone, and I'm listening to her, and she's talking, and I'm like, this lady knows what she's talking about. And I had no idea, but I knew she knew. Okay. I knew that she knew. This is one of the people I trust. I trust. This is the only person in network marketing I trust with my bank account. She's never, ever, ever talked about money with me. Ever. She makes a lot. We've never had a discussion about it. It's always about other people. All, always about helping the little person. Back then, you know who I would want to help? Me. 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 I need to, I need to make me some money. I am the little people. And, and so I start listening to her. I start reading T. Harv Eker's uh, book. And, and, and then I got introduced to some, to some other books. Now, while I was in that other company for seven years, I tell people it's my greatest experience because I never talk bad about it because I learned from the best of the best. I learned culture. I learned why, why you, I learned how to have people where you can't cut them out with a chainsaw. And I was around it for seven years. Other people look at it and say it's a bad experience. I never made any money. This is where, that's where I made my millions. I just collected them over here. Okay? That's, my, that's what I did. And so I start to change the way that I think, my thought process. I start to change the way that I think. Why? Because if you start to alter the way that you think, you will start changing the things that you say. I, I, I practice uh, uh, disassociation or limited access. I had my family and I told them, I said, listen, I'm sorry, mom, but... I got to put a five minute limit, converse, uh, limit time on our conversation because I knew where it was going to go. I love you, but I cannot talk to you for longer than five minutes. Okay? Because I was not going to allow anybody to come between me and my dreams. Not my mom, not my dad, nobody. Nobody. Because I read, me, I read the dream came from God. So if that's the case, he, I don't think there's anybody he wanted me to let come between them and what he gave me. I didn't come up with the dream. It was given to me. Same thing as yours. By whoever it is that you believe, it came from somewhere else, a higher calling, whatever it may be. So I wasn't going to let anybody interfere with that. Limited association. I had some of my friends, you know what I had to do? I had to back off a little bit. I had to back off. 
If your friends right now are telling you, specifically those of you who are, who are new in this industry, and I've got information for all levels in here. For those of you who are brand new, first opportunity. For those of you who've been in 10 years and still haven't made enough to pay your car note. And for those of you in here who are six-figure earners want to get to seven. And for those of you who are seven and want to get to eight figures. I've got information for all of you. But for those of you who are, who are brand new, if your friends are not telling you, oh, you think you're somebody now. Who are you think you are talking all that positive stuff? Man, I don't want to hang around you. Know, all you're doing is talking that positive stuff. If that's not happening, you're not about to make any money. I've got a philosophy. I observe the masses and I do the opposite. Why? Because everybody doing something, that means that that's an average action. I had to learn how to remove average from my actions, from my vocabulary. Now remember, I'm saying all of this stuff, I'm not better than you. I want you to understand where I started. I started with not even being able to make 500 bucks a month, seven years, okay? But I had to practice limited association. I don't say it for applause, I appreciate that, but I don't say it for applause. I say it because I want to give to you because I wanted people to give to me so bad. I want to talk about being able to receive as well and being able to receive information and the level of hunger that you've got to have so that you can really manage your own expectations to determine whether or not what it is that you really want is what you really want. Because some of you say things to impress the person who's sitting next to you, and that's not what you want, and you'll never go out and do what I'm talking about to get it if you're saying what you're saying to impress somebody else. The book start with why, it's, it's very important. Most people, when we talk about the, oh, let's get to some other stuff. Show me how, 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 how. How is only 5%. 5%. I took everything that I knew, all the strategies, all of the technique. You can ask somebody, I took all the technique, ladies and gentlemen, when I started my new opportunity, I threw every one of them out of the window. Because I knew technique wasn't what I needed to teach first. Why? I had to identify with it. Limited association, I had to change that. I had to start listening to some different people. And this is what was going on while those seven years that I was not making money, I was getting myself prepared. I was so glad, just like I heard, uh, I heard Brian McMillan up here, first time I've ever seen him. We've talked for years, never seen him before until I saw him on stage here. But I, 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 we've talked for years, but I heard him say his first six companies, you know, he didn't quit either. That's why he's where he is, why he makes the money he makes. He didn't quit. I didn't quit. Those seven years, you know what I did? I learned, the, I, I learned the importance of books. I learned the importance of tapes. And I can tell you what I did. People say, well, well, well you must be lucky. You, you got in first. <laughs> oh, you had a group of people to transfer over. That's what it was. <laughs> hmm. Don't think so. As a matter of fact, this is what I did. I didn't want them. Held a conference call. Two of them are sitting in here right now. Held a conference call with them. And 16 of my, of my, I had 32 frontline and 16 of them were still active. I held a conference call, told all of them, stay where you are. Please, you're probably better off where you are. Where I am going is going to be the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. And I can't have negativity along with me while I accomplish it. Yeah. Stay. And guess what? They listened to me. They stayed where they were and didn't follow, great, until they start hearing. But limited association, but I learned the art of listening to tapes, and I learned the art of, of, of reading books, and I, and I start getting into books, and I'm, t I'm a slow reader. I don't like to read, I do it anyway, but I'm a very slow reader. I sit there, and I'm, I'm one of those ADD, I sit there, and I'm, and I'm thinking about you know, who, who's on my list, and I, it's 30 minutes later, and I'm still on the same page. And I used to get frustrated because I see all of these speed readers. They, oh yeah, I read three books this week. And I'm like, can I get three chapters this week? But I did read and I listened. And, 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 and then this is what I did, ladies and gentlemen. I, I start, when I start reading and I start listening, and I start reading the, the right books. And then I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't read books today. I read chapters. 
I'm not telling you to do what I do. I just do what works for me. Everybody don't learn the same. I re- get a book. I find out what's pertinent to me, what's attractive to me about that particular book, and I master that chapter. I don't read it. I master it. I have not read a lot of books. So I'm not going to stand up here, oh, I've read 3,000 books. Well, give me the name and the title of the last one you read. Tell me what was on chapter 2, 3, 4, and 5. You don't even remember. But you want to be impressive about, oh, I've read that book. I've read this book. I've... You want to be an MLM professor. <laughs> Professors don't make money. <laughs> Artists make money. You've got to become an artist in this industry. Now, I'm not telling you don't read. I'm just telling you what works for me. I never forget, I got the book, uh, Think and Grow Rich. Here it was, because I used to be the shortcut guy. I want to take the shortcut. I'm going to take the shortcut. Why? That's what I had done all my life. I took shortcuts. I was a kid that didn't need to study in school. I could just listen, pay attention. I got it, take the test. But after the test was taken, I had forgotten everything that I had learned. I was a test taker. I did just enough to excel. Just enough, just enough. And how you do anything is how you do everything. And it caught up with me. Seven years, I never made any money. I had to pay my price. You're going to have to pay your, I don't know what your price is going to be. But you got to figure it out and pay it. And you got to pay ten tenths of the price. Not nine tenths. If your system says, hey, you should be doing X, Y, Z, well, I don't like doing that. On the application, it never said, do you like this? <laughs> the, the qualifications for top ranks in your company doesn't say, do this if you like it. No, it says, do it. That's what I had to do. And I had to start listening, and, I, and this is what I did. This, I'm, I'm sharing with you guys right now where my secret comes from. I would listen to tapes. I can tell you right now, I believe that there was about a two-year period of time in my life, I don't believe that there was anybody in the world in MLM who was listening to more tapes information than I was. And I never listened to how-to tapes. I listened to story tapes. I listened to inspirational stories. And I know some of oh, here he is with the rah-rah. I don't need the rah-rah, give me the information. 23 years in this industry, with my results, I need the rah-rah. That's why I had you guys stand up again. Because I love, I got to have the rah-rah. I get energized. I went out and bought myself from Radio Shack what's called a pillow speaker. Why? Because my wife, she get mad. It got to the point my wife would say, why are you cheating on me with your little girlfriend over there? She was talking about my little iPod and my cassette tape. Because I'm walking around the house with the, ear, with, with the earphones on. I'm just walking around the house. Why? Because I got to change the way that I'm thinking. I got to get this stuff. I, I've got, I got seven years of this garbage in my mind. Seven years of what my professor, my mom, my dad, everybody was saying, everybody around me who was broke. I was born in Ponce de Leon Projects, Tampa, Florida is where I was raised. That's what I had up in here. I had to get rid of it. And, and, and what I would do is I learned the subconscious mind never sleeps. So I'd take my pillow speaker from Radio Shack. They still sell them to this day. A little disc speaker like this. It's got about 50 holes in it. And you put it up under the pillow. And you know sound is nothing but air waves, air vibration. And that vibration would go through the pillow. My head would be on the pillow. I can hear it clear as a bell. Early and couldn't hear a thing. And every day for two years, as soon as I hit the bed, my, my, my head hit the bed, I couldn't wait to go to sleep because I couldn't wait to learn. I was going out and I was, getting, I was getting that good feeling of what it took to be a champion. You got you to gotta live how it feels to be a champion before you ever do it. You've got to practice it. You're not just going to wake up one day and they say, oh, I'm a six-figure earner and I've never even thought of what it was going to be like to be one. It doesn't happen that way. This is a profession. You've got you've to look at it as a profession. That's what I did. I had a philosophy, if I was sitting, I was reading, if I was, if I was driving, I was listening. I became fanatical about learning and, and hearing the stories of other champions in this industry. One story that really inspired me, and I'll tell you why I, am, why I even chose the company I chose today was, I don't know if he's here, I met him one time, he has no idea how he changed my entire life, a gentleman by the name of Jeff Roberti. And it wasn't something that he had actually really said to me. I'm listening to one of his tapes. That's how I knew who he was. And I happened to be at Siesta Key, Florida. I'm on the beach there, and I'm with the CEO of another company there at that time. And we're sitting out walking in front. I see this house 
And I said, man, it's a pretty cool house. He said, yeah, that's uh, Jeff Roberti's house. I said, I know that guy. I listened to one of his tapes before. And it was a tape that somebody else, that he had, he, Jeff had spoken somewhere, and they recorded it, whatever it was, and, and, and I had this tape, and I listened to that tape. And I listened over and 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 over again. I still do it to this day. To this day. To, to this day, I still go on eBay right now, and I outbid anybody on tapes from a particular company from the year of 1977 and 1981. You won't outbid. I bid thousand dollars. Nobody even thinks about it anymore. Why? Oh, he bid a thousand bucks. It's made me millions. You think I'm going to play around? Oh, let me just try to outbid him by a dollar. No. And I pay somebody to take it from tape, transfer it to CD, so I can download it on my iPod. Why? Because I know where I got, I know where I get it from. But he said something, and, it, and, and, and the guy told, this is what he told me. It changed my life. I, I'm telling you, I, I, I know for a fact there's certain people who've come into my life that's made a major impact. Most of them don't even know me. My first two ne- mentors in this industry, I've never shaken their hands, yeah. ever. They have no idea I exist. But I know everything about their entire family. If I walked up to them and tell them all the things that I knew, they'd, they'd think I was stalking them. I have never got close enough to shake their hand. Never, ever, ever. But I was talking, and I said, he told me, this is Jeff, Jeff's house right here. I said, yeah, I know this guy. I heard about this guy. Yeah, listen. I said, how many people does he have in his group? Now, here's another thing. Here's a, probably a rumor that worked for me. I don't care if he was even lying. This is what the guy said. I said, how many people does he have in his group? Because I'm thinking, that's what my thought thinking was at that time. You got to have enough people in your group. He says, well, Jeff doesn't even know how many people he's got in his group. But he's got about three to 500,000 customers on auto ship, and that's why he makes three to $400,000 a month. Hello, that's all I need to hear. All I needed to hear. Three to 400,000 customers on auto ship. See, because I had never in the last 10 or 15, 20 years heard or been exposed to anybody talking about recruiting from the company that he was a part of. And he's making that? Oh, okay. See, that was one of those moments where I said, just impact, a thought in motion, continues in the, mo- in the same motion unless interrupted by an outside force and object. My thought process now had been deterred. And I start listening and reading more books and reading more tapes and listening to more tapes and reading, reading, reading. Why? Because I had to change my thinking. And once you change your thinking, the domino effect from your thinking is that you'll now change the things that you start saying. I can listen to somebody for five minutes and I can tell whether or not you will be a long-term six-figure earner. Anybody can do it for a year or two. Anybody. That's simple. Oh, I made six figures. Did you? How long are you going to keep it? How long is it going to stay? I can get enough people to jump in any opportunity, make 100 grand. How long is it going to stay? See, when I heard his story, he had been doing it for a while. There were people making more money than him, but his was long term. Long term. Met him one time. He still probably don't even know who I am. I want. Met him, shook his hand in Dallas, Texas, told him, thank you for what you, he had no idea what I was talking about. Thank you for doing what you've done. You have no idea how you've impacted my life. But the domino effect is what you think will determine what you say, and you will start speaking like a winner. I had to learn the difference between winning speaking and and speaking from a position of lack. I had to have an abundance mentality and start thinking and start saying the things that I wanted versus saying the things that I believed or saying the things that I had. Coming to the meeting this week? Well, I'm going to try. No, you're not going to win this year. I can tell right now. Man, why don't people show up for my meetings when I invite? Nope, you aren't there yet. Well, I invited 10, but only 8 showed up. You have no idea how you're succeeding, but you're not going to make it. Not right now. Not forever, just not right now. Oh, well, you know what? Yeah, you know what? That company over there, this, our company is better, and this is why you should join my, because that company, I can tell you all the negative things about that company. You're not going to win long term. Ever. Because you're going to attract people who are just like you. 
You cannot win. That's one philosophy I have that I teach in our culture. Never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever say another negative thing about another company or another distributor. I don't care what they've done. I don't care what's happened. I see some people and it turns my stomach when a company's having issues and they, and they get excited and they start going after that company's distributor. It turns my stomach. That's, that's what you, that's what this, that's what, that's the reflection that you want our industry to have? Oh, they're, they're weak, so you, you, you're going to go and attack? That's what you're going to do? No, I promise you guys, it doesn't come that way. I, I've tried that before. I'm not here to pot call in the kettle black. I'm telling you the dumb, stupid things that I used to do until I learned. I want it long. See, there's a difference between short-term pleasure and long-term happiness. I wanted happiness. I've had short-term pleasure. I've gotten involved in companies, and, 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 and my first time ever making money in this industry, 90 days after I was in one company, I was at 20 grand a week. Wow, right? Lasted for four months. There's no wow now, is it? No. I wanted, long, I wanted to do this one time. I, I, wanted, I wanted the dream that this company's, that this industry offers. So you can't go out there talking bad about everybody else and stuff like that and, oh, look at him, this is what he did and this is what, and no, you, you, be strong enough for who you are. I'm telling you this, guys, because it's up to you guys in this room to campaign this and you, if you want to, you can actually change the image of our industry if you wanted to. You can do it, I'm telling you. You can, okay? And, and so I started changing the things that I was saying, and I start saying stuff now that sounded foreign to everybody else. My mom used to call me, or a friend used to call me, hey, Holton, how's it going? It's incredible. Hold on, what, where, where'd you get that from? Because, you see, you call folks in my family, how you doing? Fair to Midland. <laughs> if I had your hand, I'd cut mine off. <laughs> I'm doing all right. That's, that, that used to be me. Why? Because that's who I was around. Those were influential people in my life, so I did what they did. Okay. Holton, you're going to be at the meeting? Absolutely, I've already bought my ticket. I became an affirmative person. I start speaking the things that I want to speak, and then I bought another book. It's called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself, Dr. Shad Hemstetler. I bought the book. I downloaded the tape. I studied it. I studied it. Didn't read the whole book. I don't read all, I don't, because it's, it, it will take me probably four years. <laughs> I have that type of time. So I got it and I got what I needed to do and I start writing my affirmations. I start writing them in, 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 in first person, present tense with emotion. And I start telling myself how much a winner I was. And I never forget, I used to be in my little 1993 Eagle Talon. It was two-tone, green and rust, real rust. Now, here I was in my Eagle Talon. And I'm listening to Dr. Shad Hemsetler. And, and, and what I had done is I recorded me talking to me. It's weird at first. I'm telling myself a pack of lies. I'm telling myself I'm awesome. I'm telling myself I'm a million dollar a month earner. I'm telling myself all of these stuff that was a bunch of pack of lies. And I'm sitting there at the car and I'll never forget, I'm, I'm, here I am, I'm in this car, people thought I was crazy. Because I'm sitting there and I'm just talking with emotion. I'm just talking and I'm just talking, I'm just talking. And I'm, there was no cell phones to my ear, no earpiece, I'm just talking, talking, and they look at me. But I didn't care. I was working on me. I was going to do it. I observed the masses and did the opposite. Nobody else, everybody else, when they were at, their, at the red light, they're jamming their favorite radio station or their favorite CD, and they're making sure that they create another source of wealth for whoever it is that they're listening to. They're contributing to, their, their, to them. I said, no, 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 no. I'm going to contribute to mine. I know I'm going to look crazy. I know I'm going to look stupid to some people. But I'm going to be rich. I didn't know what rich meant back then, but I was just going to be it. That's what I was doing. And I would say it, say it over, over, 
over, over, over, over, over again. Because what happens is just remember, guys, the domino effect, whoever it is that you associate with will determine what you think. Whatever it is that you think will determine what you start to say. And I start speaking like a winner. And I start putting affirmations together. And you know what? Right now, Mike, I've sponsored maybe 212 people. The last 100, probably 130 of them called me. You say, oh, I know why, because you're so successful. No, no, this is before I started making this money. This has been happening the, my last 10, uh, eight years. They've been calling me. You know why? I said that they would. My affirmation was sharp and business people are always calling me to personally sponsor them into my network marketing business. I would say it over three to 4,000 times a day. Most of you won't do that. Most of you will get tired. Most of you, most of you will stop believing the lie. It was a bunch of lies I told myself because they weren't true. But how many of you know people who lie so much that they start believing them? Yep. Right? If it works for them, make it work for you. They lie about stuff that's senseless. I lied about stuff that was going to take me into the direction that I wanted to go. Why? The subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the truth and a lie. I just did it. But I start reading enough books. But you know how I found out about it? Because I listened to enough tapes in my sleep that they were telling me, and I would listen to all those speakers say what they would say and how they would say it. When they come back from a no-show, things that they would say. When they come back from a me-show, y'all know what a me-show is, right? When your distributor doesn't even show up, right? No-show is when your distributor's there and no guests. Me-show is when you are the only one who shows up, right? I drove those miles, and I'll never forget, guys, I go to meetings like this, and here I was driving 23 hours, 18 of us in a 12-passenger uh, minivan. And all 18 of us stayed in the same hotel room but because there was no such thing as buying an airline ticket when you're making $40 to $75 a month. No. And I sleep outside so I can be in the front row. So you guys right here, this is where I want to be. I, wasn't, I, w I didn't want to be cool. I didn't want to be in the back so I can talk to any. Let me share something with you. When I was at events like this, still to this day, I'm going to lose a friendship with you if you try to talk to me. Because these people here make what you want to make, and you'll let somebody else who's got your same income live in your same neighborhood talk you out of living in their neighborhood. And you sit there and you go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I looked at him. He's got a ring around the collar. I saw it. <laughs> no, I, I was going to be in the front. I was going to be as close to the front as I could get. We had this little system that we'd have. The guys, we'd sleep outside. We'd take our little coolers. We'd have our little, uh, little sleeping bags. We'd sleep out front. Why? If you do it for a Def Leppard con uh, concert or a Jay-Z concert, why won't you do it for your freedom? Why, why, why wouldn't you do it to live like nobody else that you know can live? You go to concerts. You go to sporting arenas. And I can tell you right now, those of you who love hockey, your hockey team wins the, 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 the whatever it is called. The, is it the Grey Cup? The, whatever, it, whatever cup it is. You stand up, you paint your face, you go out there and, 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 and when it's snowing and you take your shirt off and put S's on your chest, you and your buddies, you do all of that stuff for somebody else, the 12 men that are on the field or however many on the field, for them to make millions and then you come in network marketing and you want to be a professional. <laughs> I'm not going to shout too loud. <laughs> because he might just think I'm excited. I observed the masters and I did the opposite. That used to be me. I cared so much about what other people said until I started looking at my bank account. And they didn't care about my bank account. But you got to start changing what you say. You got to start saying the things that you want. You got to start speaking it in advance. I spoke, I, ladies and gentlemen, you, if those who know me, you ask Lisa, you ask Eric, we talk, I live in the future. I have trained myself so well. The, the, right now, it's boring. This is boring. Today, not this event. The present is boring to me. I never live in the present anymore. It took me years to do it. I always live in the future. You can do the same thing. Remember, 500 bucks a month, seven years. Not more than 50 people in seven years in my group. 
Changed my thought process. Changed the people I was around. It dominoed effect and changed my thought. Changed my thought process. I start saying some different things. I know I've got to be wrapping it up. They didn't have a time thing on me. I'll probably well, well over. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. Okay. All right. No problem. Now, but I, no, I want to be respectful. I want to be respectful for, for Eric. Okay. Wow. So, you know, so I changed that stuff. And I start. I start seeing small, small differences, not in my income. It didn't change. Income is not a measure of success. It's not. Or it's not the ultimate measure of success. It is one of those little check marks. You got you to be making some money now. I ain't getting this for friends. I'm good on friends. Okay? I need to make some money. You need to make some money too. And don't be embarrassed about wanting to make money. I, I, it, y'all say I can be real. It, it really just turns me some. Why'd you get in? I just want to help people. Now, hold on. Hold on. Because I got, I got a lot of helpers out here who really want to help people. And I'm not putting them down. But I just want to help people. Well, when's the last time you sh- shared your product? Well, and you want to help people? Why'd you get in? Well, I got a foundation that I want to support. How many people have you called on your list? Well, most of them, I don't think that they would want to do this. You got a, you got a foundation you want to support? Yeah. No, you, you got to change that. Stop allowing people to make you feel guilty about wanting to get rich. Trust me, I've been on both sides. I highly recommend the rich side. It comes highly recommended. I'm just letting you know, all right? I'm just telling you, it's okay, all right? But you got to change that stuff. You've got to become a walking, talking promotion machine to you. I, prom- I was the Don King for Holton Bugs. I promoted me so, I was so awesome to me in my mind, I never told anybody else how awesome I was. Because they don't believe you anyway. I still to this day don't. Because eh? to me, I'm, I, love, I, I, I got a few friends that I love getting back around. We call ourselves the Wolf Pack. It's, it's five of us. These are my high school buddies. They never went out, made a lot of money. They never, it was negative to me or whatever, but we get together maybe two times a year. Limited association. <laughs> two times a year, okay? You know why I love getting around them? Because I'm not Mr. Bugs to them. I'm Mr. Bugs to most people in my group, and I am oh, the MLM guru to a lot of folk. That's not who I am. I'm me. That's just who I am. And you've got to figure out who it is that you, who do you want to be? See, when you get free, that's when you can become who you want to become. I never was me until I got free. When somebody else was signing my paycheck, I couldn't do what I want to do. I couldn't wake up the time I want to wake up. I couldn't go to bed when I want to go to bed. I couldn't vacate when I want to vacate. By the way, rich people don't take vacations. They just live their life in a different part of the world when they choose to. Because they, what are you vacating from? We ain't vacating from nothing, right? Some people, they, you know, it gets on them when I say rich and stuff like that. I, I speak a lot so I can really get under some people's skin. Why? Because that's going to provoke you to start thinking. But rich to me is not about money. You know, my wife has never seen our back, back office ever. Ever. She has no idea how much money we make. She just knows how much taxes we pay. <laughs> Four and a half million in taxes last year. But hold on, guess what? I set a goal that I was going to one day pay a million dollars a year in taxes. I spoke it. I was talking it. I was talking about it all the time. I sold myself on how I sold myself on everything that I'm doing today because I started to learn how to speak, what to say, 
to myself, to myself. I was the most important person that I was going to be talking to. 70% of the conversations that you've ever had in your life is between you and you. So guess what? If you're not getting your results, <laughs> you talked yourself out of it. If I can talk myself out of it, I can talk myself into it. That's all I did. I don't have, the fa- I, I don't have a fancy system and I don't know much about the internet. And I, don't, it's, I think it's great, all the different methods, because people who've spoken up here, they've done it. I just don't know how to do it. I can barely check an email. My biggest secret? How many of you all know what my biggest secret is? I'm going to tell you what my biggest secret is. What my, my secret system. You cannot outfriend me. See, nobody's writing that down because, oh, but if I tell you four steps to recruiting, you write it all down. You can't outfriend me. I don't have a database of people. Never have. I've never, I've never had a listing of the people in my organization, ever. Don't need it. I never plan on calling them. But you see, these two people right here, nobody's ever been a friend to them that, like I have, ever. Ever. I have a saying in my business, you want to build a diamond ship, better build a friendship. Not going out, you cannot, you're not going to outfriend me. See, somebody else can get you on Facebook and do all of this stuff and get you to jump over, but they cannot, see, you can't outfriend, they, they can do that. Somebody else can do a better Facebook message or a better system and get you to, because that one looks better. But, but I'm going I'm, I'm to make sure that, now, I'm not saying that everybody that I'm a friend to understands how to be a friend to me. But them being a friend to me has nothing to do with my responsibility of being a friend to them. See, that, I know that's not that hypey stuff that you expected. It's my secret sauce. It's not a skill set. It's not a technique. I don't use it as a technique. It's real. It's the real deal. I'm, I'm going to make sure that if it ever comes to a decision of who gave the most, it's always going to be me who gave the most. I'm always going to tell them the truth even if they don't like it. I'm always going to be there and, tell, and just do what I know I should do regardless of what they've done to me. Got two guys right here talked about me like a dog when I joined my current company. There were two on my, on my call who just didn't, who stayed. When I remember I told everybody to stay, they, those two stayed. He ain't going to do it. I can't believe it. Now, before, I was a hero. Now that I've chosen something else, he ain't going to do it. It's going to crash. It's going to burn. It's whatever it was. I knew all the things that they were saying. It had nothing to do with me. As soon as my phone rang, he called me up. He says, hey, man, we need to talk. Let's talk. And I've been a friend to him ever since. I learned that in that company I never made any money in. I got one of my best friends... And, and his, he was making about 500 bucks a month when he joined my company. Okay. 500 bucks a month. And uh, he's doing pretty well now. Okay. I know for a fact, you can write him a check for $20 million. No, let's just say 100. Because he makes 20 million every four years. So let's say 100. He ain't go budge. You know what? I never wanted his CV. I never wanted his volume. I never wanted his people. I just wanted, I just wanted to be friends with him and his wife. Let me ask you a question. Do you even know the names of the kids of your front line? Or, do, or you know their ID number and how to get into their back office to check their volume? I'm telling you right now how to build a, how to build a dynasty. I'm telling you right now how to keep something strong. Hey, hey, come on over here. Let me introduce you to my downline. I hope I'm not stepping on toes, but don't, don't, don't say that. Who wants to be the down line? Now, I know you don't mean any harm. You just say it because that's part of the nomenclature of network marketing, but this, they're, they're people. They got feelings. Hey, let me introduce you to part of my success team. How do you think he or she feels now? 
different. I'm telling you, that's the difference. Learn to be a good listener. I talked about talking and saying and stuff like this, and I'm about to wrap it up. But learn to be a good listener as well. Now, when I say listener, I don't listen to garbage. You cannot, I'm very strong in my beliefs. People know you can't come, you, you, when you come, you got to come correct. Be a good listener. Most of you practice what you're going to say to a person, and that's why you don't even remember their names when you shake their hand because you're thinking about your pitch. People don't want to be pitched. They're tired of being pitched. People want authenticity. They want somebody who's real. They, they want to know when the chips really get down that you're going to be there. That's what they really want. That's what, that's, that's what they really want. I get networkers, hey, listen, what kind of deal are you going to give me? <laughs> Ain't nobody going to be a friend to you like I've ever been. Like, hold on for a second. I'm, I'm not talking about that kind of stuff, Holson. What, what, what? Well, that's the deal, right? That's the deal you want? Well, I mean, what, what, what other deal you want? That's the deal that I'm going to make with you. I'm going to be there. I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. It's the, I'm telling you, guys, it's a small thing. It's not these great promotion, promoted promotional things that make people want to stay and be around you. You've got to learn how to be a friend to people. A true friend, not a friend for the volume, a true friend. I've got people who left my company before. You know what I do? I never talk bad about them. Because that's not a friend. Just because now they don't, they don't take your path, now they're not your friend. Oh, they were a convenience friend. As long as they're making money for you, they're your friend. But when they stop making money for you, they're your enemy. No, that's not a good philosophy. My philosophy is this, just because you don't take my road don't mean that you got lost. I always tell them, hey, listen, keep me up to date on your success. Hopefully you do extremely well. Yeah. It's the difference maker, but see, this is why, as Curtis mentioned to you, I started with non-networkers when I built my current company. Before, I was a networker guy. I started with non I started with people who don't understand the bad culture that I used to promote. I started with people who had a blank canvas, and I taught them what, what we know. I've got another, I saw another one of my guys over there. First time networker, I'm not gonna call his name. First time networker, he used to be an engineer too. He's making 170 something thousand dollars a month. 20 months ago, he was at 20 grand a month. First time networker. He only knows the way I teach it now. So anybody else come with something different, it doesn't phase him because he's learned, he's, he's so locked into his upline. They, they're, they're so strongly, this is, I'm telling you, this, if you want to make the real, this is what it is. Here. That's the truth. I spent too many years messing organizations up. I know. So don't think, oh, he's built it because he got lucky. He was the first one. There were 6,000 people in my current company before I joined. I wasn't first. But I developed a culture. Okay? I developed a culture. So learn what to say. Learn how to listen. When you develop what you say, your speech and the things that you say will domino effect into what you believe. It doesn't take faith to build network marketing any longer. It may take faith to build in your company if nobody's ever done it. How many of you, how many of you know the definition of faith? I've heard the de many different definitions. The substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, right? The belief that what I cannot see will happen. Those are definitions of faith. How many of you have ever seen a million dollar earner in network marketing? Well, you have evidence, so you don't no, no longer need faith. Whoever did it first needed faith. All you need is belief. You don't need faith anymore. You just need belief. You got to believe that you can do it. And you start working on your belief. How do you work on your belief? All the things that I just said. The people you're around will determine the things that you think. The things that you think will determine the things that you say. The things that you say will determine what it is that you believe. See, I lied to myself so much about how much money I was going to make that I actually ended up believing it. 
I told Eric before, I said, listen, I don't need a million dollars a month to live. Not, I don't need, no, I don't need that. In, in terms, well, put it this way, I need it. I don't, I, I don't need a million dollars a month for my necessities. It's a whole different training when I talk about needs versus necessities, completely different. But I spoke and I did it as a challenge. I was 35 years of age and I said, by the time I turn 40, on my 40th birthday, I will make a million dollars a month. I will do it. Why? Because it needs to be done. I was listening to another tape by another gentleman who started talking about how to make quantum leaps in your network marketing business. I listened to it probably about 4,000 times again. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Over and over, I listened to it over and over. And he started talking about all of this stuff and he says, you know what, if you do this, I, not only will you be, can be a six-figure monthly earner, you can be a six-figure weekly earner. When he said that, I almost cried. I was like, weekly? Who can make six figures a week in this industry? But I start saying it, I listen to what he start talking, and I start saying it, I start saying it, I start saying it, I was saying it, and at the time, my income at one company at that time was between seventy, eighty, two thousand dollars $82,000 a month. Stuff happened in that company, and now what ha- that company uh, had some challenges, went out of business, and here I am, I'm at another company. My income now is all the way up to $2,000 a month. Me, the Holton Bugs, two thousand dollars a month. Yep, this is after I had already become a million dollar earner. I'm at my lowest low income wise. My team is hurting and my team is suffering. And, and I went into almost depression because it, it wasn't me. I had enough money put up, put, put away. I wasn't worried. But my team, I'm watching foreclosure and repossessioning and, and, and it came to me. I got to make a million dollars a month because I know if I do it, what the other people will be making when I do it. And I set the goal and I, and I put the goal down and I start speaking it over and 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 over. And I start thinking about it, saying it over and over and over and over again. I'm at $2,000 a month. I'm 35 years of age. I'm talking about a million a month? Quantum leap. At that time, I wasn't listening to that tape, but the tape was already in there burnt in there. It's in there already. And I'm listening, and I'm listening, and I'm listening. Thirty-five years of age. My birthday is September 26. My goal was to hit it by September. September, t- September come. Didn't hit it. Hit 9.75. Hold on. I'm not saying if, no, no, listen. I'm just telling, get the principle. Forget about the money. I'm only talking about the money so that you understand what I'm talking about. Honestly, I don't even care about the money anymore. I don't. I did before, okay? I don't anymore. So September come, I missed it. November came, I hit it. Then I went back and looked at the exact month that I set the goal. It was November in the first place. I hit it exactly when I said I was going to do it. Exactly when I said I was going to do it. I told Eric one of my my other goals because I set a goal 2010. This is what I set a goal for, and I'm wrapping this up here. This is what I set the goal. I said, listen, i never forget. I started 2011. I listened to somebody. I I listened to Jay-Z do an interview I forgot the guy, uh, it's, it's, it's the, um, the Screen Editors Guild or something like that, when the guy sits up and it's nothing but black and they got the, this, the actors out there. Is that what it is? Actor Studio. Did you see the Jay-Z portion? I saw Jay-Z up there and I all, when I look at anything, I look for the lesson. And I heard Jay-Z say one thing, that he wanted to make something, turn the ordinary into extraordinary. I didn't need to see no more. I watched it for an hour and a half. I didn't need to see no more. That became my theme. 2010 is when I saw it. 2011, I'm doing a conference call. I'm telling everybody, get prepared. We're going to make the ordinary extraordinary. We're going to make the unusual usual. We're going to make what's abnormal normal. We're going to think bigger than we ever have. Yeah, we've done great so far. We've done some good things, but we are going to go out there and make this happen. We're going to, we're we're going to set the new, the, the new level for what's normal. 
It needs to be that way. I never forget, $10,000 a month used to be the big deal in network marketing. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a five-figure monthly earner. Then it became, oh, I make 100 grand a year. That was the big deal. After 100 grand a year, it became, I'm a multiple six-figure earner. The bar kept raising, multiple six-figure earner. Then it became, I'm a $100,000 a month earner. Whoa, 100 grand a month? And this is what I've realized, ladies and gentlemen. I did my study and I found out what happened and why it wasn't people making things happen. Typically what happens is this, in most companies you'll find one, two, maybe three six-figure monthly earners. And it stops. Not because of the opportunity is bad. They stop growing. They stop thinking. They put a lid on the group. And the six-figure earner became the big guy or the big lady. And it stops with two to maybe three of them. And I said, it's not going to happen over here. We're going to think extraordinary. And that was when I had my million dollar a month goal in as well and all that kind of stuff. And ladies, and now I've created a culture where whereas if you're making, you know, if you're, we don't put anybody, you can make $20 a month and we celebrate your success because you earned it. But I can tell you right now, you've got to create a culture in your, in your, team, in your company where the ego doesn't get in the way. You got $40,000 a month earners in some companies that I've been a part of, they walk in, where's my chariot to bring me into the meeting? You know I don't walk in without two people over here throwing flowers at my feet. I made 40 grand last month. We've created a culture. We've got people who are in our company making $150,000 a month. We come to some VIP meetings, we don't have enough seats, and we got $150,000 a month earners standing on the wall. Nobody even know who they are because they're grateful. They're not big shots. I'm not a big shot. I go to meetings. Every meeting I go to visit, you know what I do when I first get there? I'm telling you what you have to do. If you want to be a champion, shake the hand of the people who are out there serving. Right when I get to, I shake everybody's hand, and you know what I do? I reach into my wallet or my pocket, and I pay my five bucks or my t whatever the meeting cost is. You pay? Of course. I'm a distributor. Why shouldn't I pay? Oh, I'm a hundred, I'm a hundred grand a month. I walk in. I shouldn't have to pay. Why not? You've already set a bad example in your company. See, we, these, those 30, out of the 40 plus people making that money, the hundred grand a month, 35 of them have never made any money in their life. They don't know any other way. They never, they never, they, they don't feel entitled. They don't feel entitled. But you got to start believing it. Once you start believing, you got to put the actions in. You got to do the work. Whatever the work is, you got to put the work in. Put the work in. This is net work marketing. It's not net sit marketing. It's not net play marketing. It's not net think about it marketing. It's not net one day I'll get to it marketing. It's net work marketing. And most people miss the W, the work part. Net work marketing. I worked my butt off. I can tell you right now. Now, remember, it's not just work. You've got to be productive, not just active. You've got to be productive. I'll tell you why I make what I make today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this down. This is, my, this is my schedule when I first started, okay? My first day. It was because of what I did day one, not because of what I've done over the last two years. I set the exam. See, everybody want to take notes now. You see? I've already said the most, you didn't write notes when I said they won't outfriend me. That's more important than what I'm going to put on the board right now. But see, anything that's skill, skill related, we want to take notes. Anything that's really inspiration related that really matters, we don't. Don't worry, my group's the same way. It's not just you. First day, this is what I did, ladies and gentlemen. Work. Why? I knew. Remember I told you I got to believe much bigger, much faster. I only set two income goals or three income goals since I've been in, organo, uh, been in my company. Sorry to talk about those, that, that company. But anyway, set three income goals since I started. My first goal was my first week. My first week's goal was to make $70,000 my first week. Yes, $70,000 was my first week's income goal. I missed it. Didn't make it. Make $25,830. But it didn't matter. That was my goal. My second goal, 18-month goal, 250000 a month. Missed that one too. Hit 249. Why? 
your business should be predictable. It's all, this is a business. I know my business. You got to know your company and your business. I know my business, and it's just as predictable as Exxon knows how much sales of oil they're going to do in the year 2015, and it hasn't come yet. But if you ask any of the executives, they can tell you with a small margin of error what the results are going to be because there are certain things that cause a certain effect in the business, you've got to figure that out for your company, but it is predictable. You can't be out there, well, I'm just going to throw enough mud on a wall until it sticks. It doesn't work that way. Eric talked about the 90-day game plan. It's predictable. What are you going to get done in 90 days? This is what I did. Day one, I called that group of 32 people. This is what I told them. It was actually 32 people I've sponsored. I had 16 of them on the call. This is what I told them. I said, listen, my current company, what, what I'm launching tomorrow. If those of you who want to know what I'm doing, be on my conference call tomorrow. They were on my conference call at 10 a.m. 10 a.m., I had 16 people on the call. I explained to them, I said, listen, don't ever ask me anything about our previous company anymore. You've got 24 hours to ask me about that company. I will know that word is no longer in my vocabulary. I never said anything good or bad about the company. I have never left the company and talked bad about them, ever. It didn't matter what took place, okay? Now, and so what happened is this here. I said, guys, listen, you guys are, right now, we're going to do my first, what I call, first movers advantage conference call. I'm sideways. This way? This better? Okay, here we go. I said, I'm going to do my first, first movers advantage conference call. It's going to start at 12 o'clock. Here I am at 10 a.m. This is what I did. I'm, you don't have to copy this. This is what I did. Okay, don't write this stuff down. This don't matter. Whatever your method of exposures are, that's what you do. Get with your upline. Get the mentality that I had. Not this, the mentality. So 12 o'clock comes. This is what I did here. I said, guys, listen, out of these 16 people, I said, I suggest you have 10 people on the conference call. They said, well, okay, 12 o'clock when? Next Tuesday? I said, no, 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 no. Today. Today? Ten people? We only have an hour and a half. I say, exactly. You guys are already in. I got to start making phone calls. Goodbye. <laughs> How many of you have talked to your prospects about doing a meeting or a call? Well, I've got to give them 36 hours to get the baby. <laughs> You're not going to win big. Not if you want to launch something. Remember, professionals launch a business. Amateurs join a business. I don't join anything. I am a launcher. I launch. Okay? When you look at uh, 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 Microsoft, did they launch Xbox or did they just announce it? They launched it. Sony, they launched this new PS4, whatever it is, however many millions pre-ordered and sold. They launched it. I'm a businessman. You are a business person. You should launch it. This is what happened. 100, uh, 125 people showed up on that conference call. On that conference, don't clap, don't clap. It's not the number, it's the attitude, it's the mentality. My group before, they saw me give people 24, 36 hours to prepare for a stupid conference call. You're sitting at home. You don't need three days. If you found a pot of gold and you needed a few friends to come help you get it and they told you you can get all that you want, are you gonna say, well, I can't call Leroy because he needs three days. Leroy, listen, I found a pot of, you better get, Leroy's like, where is it? I'm putting on my pajamas right now. I'm coming out the door. If you make it important enough. Some of you don't make it important enough. My next call was at two o'clock. Two o'clock, guess what? We had 225 people on the conference call because I told them the exact same thing. I painted the dream. I couldn't even explain the comp plan at all. Didn't know all the details. But what I told those 225 people, I said, listen, you guys are the second people to hear about it. I'm working on something called Project 5,000, 90 days. I'm going to put 5,000 people in this organization. And nobody has signed up yet. And none of you on this call can sign up either. But we're going to do another conference call. They say, when? It's going to be at 2 o'clock. I mean, at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, I did another conference call. Guess what we had? 435 people on that conference call. That's a lot of activity, isn't it? That was half my day. Six o'clock, no more conference calls. Did my first home meeting 
at my house. I'll never forget, I had on a white t-shirt, shorts, flip-flops. Didn't even have time to get dressed. I lost 18 pounds. I thought it was because of our product. That's the testimony I was given. It was really because I forgot to eat while I was launching. I was so fired up and excited. That's what was happening. Six o'clock came, this is what I had. I had 25 people show up at my house and say, come on in, told them about Project 5000. And I'm sitting there spitting in all this stuff and telling them all about the stuff, whiteboard, no PowerPoint, didn't have PowerPoints for six months, no PowerPoints. I drew on a board, told them what my vision was, what we were about to accomplish, and that we're about to do the biggest project we've ever done in our lifetime. And if you wanna get started, you can. That's what happened. At, at 7.45, you know what was happening at 7.45? 7.30, I mean, my doorbell was ringing with the second group of people that were invited. 35 people showed up at my house. And you know what I told those people here? I said, listen, the first 25, I said, guys, I got to wrap this up. We got another group of people that's coming over here. If you want to get in, you can, but go ahead over here to the dining room. My wife has the applications over there, blah, blah, blah. You can get signed up over there, but I've got another group of people that's coming in and I can't be late with them. By the way, those of you who go ahead and sign up now, this group that's behind you, they possibly could be in your organization if you go ahead and get in right now, all right? So this is 7.30. Guess what happened at nine o'clock, ladies and gentlemen? Nine o'clock, guess what I had? I had another 40 people show up at my house. And I was running shift work, okay? 10 o'clock, guess what? I did my last meeting for the day, and I think at 10 o'clock I had about 50 people show up at my house. And I'm doing the same thing. I lost my voice. I did that for the first day. You know what my leaders were doing? They're looking at me like, this dude is crazy. I've never seen him like this before. You know why they never seen me like that before? Because I had never done all that I could do. I had never gone all out. I had never sold completely out. It ain't because of what my product is. It ain't because of my comp plan. It's because of what I did day one. I kept this up for two weeks straight. This is not including the one-on-ones that I did. This is not including the three-way calls. This was my schedule every day, group calls, four a day, four home meetings a day that I was doing every single day. And what I did is I showed them an example and they went out and they start doing the exact same thing. That's why my results were where they were. My first day late, if you count it up, I exposed almost 700 people. I did more in my first 24 hours than some people do all year. It's not because I'm do, I do magic, it's because of what the math is. It's simple. You can do the same thing. It's not, okay, I got rich quick. I compress time frames. Compress time frames. This is the work. You do the action, and ladies and gentlemen, when you put the action in, whatever your action is, you find out what your mentor or your coach tells you you need to do, and that's what you need to do. You put the work in, and don't give any excuses why you can't do it. Excuses don't work. Now, I know I may be a little too intense. For, I get excited when I talk about my dream. I get excited and passionate when I talk about what, what works and what's going on. That's just who I am. I don't apologize for it. But don't, I don't want you to think some of you, uh, that he's, I'm yelling at you because I don't know many of you in here. I don't want you to say he's yelling at me. They, Eric brought this crazy wild man on stage and he was spitting and yelling and he looked at me and he was pointing at me and no, I, I, I'm yelling in love. I love you. I want you to just do this thing, okay? That's what I want you to do, all right? And I promise you, your group, they will catch on. When you do the action, they will follow what you do. They won't listen to what you say. This is what I want you to do real quick. As I, real quick. I got two minutes, real quick. Everybody stand up real quick. I know your butt's been hurting around now. Real quick, stand up real quick. Stretch your arms all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Put your arms behind your back. Put them on your backside. Now pull your underwear out your butt. We'll go around if you have to real quick, okay? Now I want you to stretch all the way up. Take your palm of your hands and I want you to act like you're actually hitting the, you're pushing up on the roof, on the ceiling. You're pushing up on the ceiling with the palm of your hand. Palm of your hand, pushing up on the, stretch. You should feel it right here, you should feel it right here. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Take your left hand, put it behind your back. Now stretch real high with this hand here. Real high, real high. I want you to take this hand, the right hand. I want you to just close it up like this. Make a fist, okay? And stretch those muscles, stretch those muscles. This is a two minute drill here, stretch those muscles. Now what I want you to do is I want you to do this right here. Stretch those three fingers by making an O like this, okay? Make an O like this, see that? Stretch, you should feel it right here, right here, okay? Now this is what I want you to do. I want you to take that O, I want you to put it right here on your chin. I said your chin. See, people will do what you do, not what you say. 
They do what you do. I said chin just as clear as day, but you did what I did. That's not a two minute drill exercise. I just want to show you people do what you do. Sit down. Now, so you do that and then you'll have the results. This is what the results are, ladies and gentlemen. The results are some of you who are part-time, you will start being able to go to bed when you get tired of staying up. The results are you'll be able to wake up when you get tired of sleeping. See, those actions are gonna produce the results. Then, then, then you'll be able to have what we call freedom. You'll be able to have retirement parties like, like, like we would have. I never forget being able to retire people and pick them up, take them with limousines and have roses and all kind of stuff in there. And, 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 and the last time that they would ever look at an office building because we retired them from this, because of networking. You'll be able to go wherever it is that you want to go with your friends and, 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 and guess what? They can afford to pay for themselves. That was one of my goals. I just want to go somewhere where everybody else can afford to pay for it. That's the results, okay? The, the, the results is, I tell you, if you do this the right way and if you operate on the right principles, you will have a better marriage. Most old oh, network marketing ruined my marriage. No, it's not true. It was already bad from the beginning. Network marketing exposed the problems that you didn't fix. But when you do what I'm talking about, your marriage will become solid. You'll become a better father. My son, he's equipped because of this industry. That's my biggest result, not my money. My son, 16 years old, he is a tiger. He is off the hook. I'm telling you. The boy's sharp, sharp. Why? Because he's seen mommy and daddy go out and do what they're supposed to do. Work ethic like crazy. Dream is huge. He's ready for the world. Two years ago, he set a goal to make $100,000 for the summer. He came up short. He only made 60 and donated all 60 to the victims who had actually got hurt in the hurricanes over there in Tennessee and Alabama. The boy's bad. He was 14 years old. He says, Dad, I want to make 100 grand this summer. Think much bigger, much faster. See, that's, to him, that's normal. It's normal. He was asking me about one of my guys, one of my guys. He says, is Uncle Ed, how much money did Uncle Ed make? I said, he made almost two million. What is he waiting on? That's all he made? And he's not sarcastic. Average is taught. Above average is as well. But those are some of the results, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the results, the, the, the results are you don't, you don't, nothing phases you anymore. I lay down at night. My biggest result that I have, ladies, when I lay down at night, my wife and I, we lay down at night. It's peaceful sleep. We think about nothing. We owe nobody anything. Do we have material? Yeah, we got material stuff. It's for you. For some of y'all to believe. When I walked in here earlier with my jogging suit on, nobody even knew who I was. I got to come in blinged out for people. Oh, yeah, that must be him. I like nice stuff. That don't mean nothing to me. Here right there in California, I never forget, was going to do a meeting. These, this is the real result. We're going to do a meeting. We, got, we bought a house in California for our black diamonds, okay? For people who want to come in and be able to just do a little whatever it is, you know, nice stuff. We just, we just say, let's do it. 11,000 square feet, 10 bedrooms, nine bathrooms, no mortgage. It's off the hook. We just put a million dollars in the backyard. Okay, that's the results. But we were leaving there to go do a meeting. Guess what happened? We were leaving, we knew we were gonna be in the hotel. People were working at the house, so we took all of our jewelry and we went to go do the meeting. Our hotel wasn't ready, so we went to the shopping mall, left bags in the car, forgot about it. We normally don't leave bags in the car. And guess what happened? Just so happened, our stuff was in the car. Somebody right in front of valet parking stole our stuff. My wife's ring, wedding ring. $370,000 wedding ring, gone. This watch I got on here, she's got one too. Both of them were gone. Gone. Almost $800,000 worth of stuff stolen. 
let me tell you what the results are. Before, I would have had a syllogism. I would have closed them all up. Nobody going to move until I get my stuff. But because what the results are, I said, honey, listen. We didn't, get, we didn't have to encounter this. We don't have any memories of anybody holding a gun to us. We don't have any memories of seeing it going. It was $800,000 $800, worth of stuff. That's not, not a problem whatsoever. That's 17 days worth of our income. So we'll get it back in 17 days. Don't worry about it. Because we put, now the focus is on more importance. Before, man, it's taking this jacket. There's going to be some furniture moving around there. Those are the results. The results of being able to take that house and take my family, and I, I take about 30 people in my family, fly them up to the, you know, for Christmas and stuff like that, and just spoil them. December is my, is my month for me. Some of you, I'd I love for you to join me in this. This is what I did. I started eight years ago. December, I abstained from purchasing anything for myself. Nothing for me, nothing for Holton. Completely abstained. Can't buy me anything. Nobody forced me to do this. I just start doing it. And all I would do back then is I'd start and I'd take 1200 bucks and I'd make sure I'd give 12 $100 tips to people who are expecting a 5 or a $10 tip. I'd go into like a Denny's, eat, have a little $15 meal, leave a $100 tip because I noticed the difference so little to me how big of a difference it made to so, so many other people. I wouldn't stay around and shake their hand and talk to them because I didn't want to do it for, their, for recognition. I wanted to do it because I really wanted to make a small little difference. But it's grown now. I call it my 12 days of Christmas. December, I, my goal is to find opportunities and spoil people. I never look for the recognition for it. Next year, 2014, my wife and I are finding opportunities to give large sums of money away. Next year, we'll give away multiple seven figures that, no, that people won't even know about. But there's causes and, and there's people. And, and this is why we do it, because it replenishes the joy. And I, you cannot put a price tag on joy. You can have all the money in the world and we make a, a, a nice bit of it. But I can tell you the biggest thing that we have is we're free. Not just because we don't owe anybody anything. We're free because, because we, our conscience is free. There's nobody can say I Holton backstabbed him. There's nobody who can say Holton took this from him. There's No, guys, that's the result when you do it the right way. I, I love spoiling our parents. And I, with closing, I want to show you a video of, of a couple things that we did. With. You can do this now. But remember, I started with just $100 tips. $100 tips. $100 tips. $100 tips. This, 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 this Christmas here, I'll probably tip somewhere around about $30,000. I started with 100 Okay, I started with 100 I don't do it so I can receive. I do it because I, I want to receive the joy. I don't want the monetary. No, it, it don't work that way. But I just go out there and make, you just do, watch what a difference it'll make in your life, the person you become and the people that you start to attract. Thoughts determine the domino effect is your speech. Your speech determines and domino effect your beliefs. Your beliefs domino affect your actions, and your actions domino affect your results. Let's roll this video here real quick as I, as I end up. I always had a dream to buy my mom a house. She used to always tell me about this house, and she would visit it. And this house here, this was years ago. I went and bought this house for my mom. This was her dream house. She never knew. I wish I had the video for that one. It was the model house that she'd always go and visit. And one day I bought it and I went and made a negotiation with the people. I bought that house and the lot next door. And I says, the only negotiation is this. I need to close today and I need every piece of furniture the way she remembered it to stay in here. And this, it was just like this. And this was, the, this, was where I, this was one of my results of being able to spoil my mom. And when she came there, she thought she was coming to visit the guest house again. And we had 75 people there and said, no, this is yours. Yeah. It's not the money. You can, you, some of you can do it right now. But I want, you to, I want you to see this here. This is my mother-in-law. 
We just did this in June. We just bought her the car, her dream car. She had no idea what was going on, and she just see. You can't buy this. They're our biggest cheerleaders and supporters. That's the result. When you do it, the, when you go out there and make the money, these are some of the results. This is my dad. I just did this two weeks ago. He's coming out of the restaurant. We're coming out of Ruth Chris. He have no idea. Limited edition Stingray, 2014 Corvette Stingray. Watch him, watch him now, watch him, watch him. Saw my dad cry. <laughs> he still drives it with the thing in the window that says "Happy Birthday, Dad." Pops. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you go out there, make it happen. Those beliefs will determine actions. Those actions will give you the results. Eric. I want to thank you so much, Lisa, Curtis. Thank you. I know I went over. Appreciate you guys. Go out there.